So we are joined by the 2016 Society President, Ed Egelman. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. You are uh, just wrapping up your first term here as president. Tell us uh, how it went and were you able to achieve some of the things that you set out to do? Well, it's been a very productive year. If I had an hour, I could go through all of the <laughs> things that we've accomplished or that are in process. But let me just pick out a few highlights. This year we've had four focused thematic meetings in different areas of biophysics. One was in South Africa, um, one was in Brazil, one was in Taiwan, and one was in Spain. So the geographical footprint has uh, been pretty large, and I think we're having a lot of impact in terms of communicating biophysics and attracting new members. That's great. Now, you guys uh, also, the society, of course, being very close to Capitol Hill. Talk about uh, public policy, some of the issues you've been dealing with uh, the legislature. Well, I, I could bring up two things that come to mind. One is um, the National Institutes of Health and other government agencies have been very concerned about the issue of reproducibility and transparency in the scientific research they fund. So we've played a very leading role in trying to formulate specific guidelines for different areas of biophysics and one, the area in which I work, cryo-electron microscopy, we've actually been able to get a unanimous resolution at a meeting of cryo-EM people in terms of new standards for data accessibility and transparency, which we think will greatly help on the issue of reproducibility. A second thing I'd just like to point out is that we've organized an event on Capitol Hill during Biophysics Week in March, where one of our members, Michael Levitt, who's a Nobel laureate in chemistry, will talk to congressional staff and Congress people about the importance of fundamental scientific research in terms of the future of the United States. How challenging is it to uh, get lawmakers sort of on board, if you will, and because these are very complex topics, and and you know, conveying that to some of the lawmakers who may not have a scientific background might be challenging. It is and it's very difficult in general communicating science to the public, but it's something uh, American scientists have done very, very poorly, and that's why many or most American adults don't even accept evolution. Majority do accept climate change, but science is not communicated very well. So we've been working specifically through the Public Affairs Committee at different initiatives to really try and explain to lay people how science is an engine of economic growth and also is needed to deal with diseases from cancer to uh, various pathogens. Absolutely. Now the society, um, obviously, it's, it's a great organization. Um, what has it done for your personal career? And then uh, adding to that, how do you think it can help other people and, and are you encouraging more folks to get involved? Well, the type of networking that goes on routinely at meetings such as this is invaluable to anyone's career. Um, science is not done in isolation. I mean, someone can't go out on a desert island and think and, and do great science. It's incredibly interactive. And one of the attractions of coming to a meeting like this is that you can hear someone else talk about something different from your own work and realize that it overlaps with your work and that there's a potential synergy and people form these new collaborations and people use uh, completely um, different methods to approach similar problems. And that's what really is driving the future of science. Yeah, networking and a meeting of great minds indeed. Ed Eggleman, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you.